Hello, my name is Nikita Sudegut Gamer, and I'm a position 3 main who climbed from Archon 4 to Immortal in only 4 months. This is my first time hitting Immortal, and there is not a lot of resources that teach you the offlane role. So I've decided to create this ultimate piece of content for the Dota 2 community. Uh, so what does it take to become Immortal in Dota in offlane role? Well, it takes everything. And I'm gonna explain to you what everything means exactly. This video doesn't go in deep details about each topic, but rather it goes wide. It highlights everything that you should do as an offlaner. And if you want to learn uh, about everything I mentioned in details, I suggest to search more information for that particular topic uh, via YouTube or Reddit. This guide is separated in four parts. The first one is learning mindset, uh, how you need to approach your climbing. Uh, this section is very important because without it, you'll get stuck at some rank and will have no idea how to get out of it. Uh, the second uh, part is offlane role description. I'll briefly describe the role, what is the, what uh, your team wants from you and stuff. The third one is learning uh, knowledge because it's very important to win early game as an offlaner. Uh, the fourth one will be general game knowledge. It's like, I don't know, more about the game, not after the learning stage, basically. And the fifth part is outside of game knowledge, like what should you do if you're not playing. Uh, there will be chapter links in the description of this video. Uh, you can check out them below and let's go. So what separates an ancient player with 4k matches who is stuck and can't climb out of their rank and an average 4k matches immortal player? I'll explain it with a chart. Bottom of this chart shows the amount of matches they both have and uh, the left one, uh, the left axis show the game knowledge they've accumulated. You can say that it's kind of equal to their MMR, so there are medals to the right. Both players started strong, learned a lot about the game, climbing the ranks. But at around 2k matches, you start to see a very important difference between them. Ancient player knows a lot about the game and thinks he's the best. He thinks his teammates are dragging him down because he sees a lot of their mistakes. Uh, or he thinks it's the algorithm that always trying to give him hard opponents or bad teammates. Whatever it is, he is not in control, so he can't climb. An immortal player on the other side saw how hard this game really is and kept and kept improving. He didn't blame their team, instead he saw how much mistakes he's doing every game. He was taking responsibility for those mistakes, he was fixing them, and always tried to be better. The difference between those players is that the ancient player stopped improving and the mortal player did not. He found a way. My idea of climbing MMR is to accumulate your game knowledge. Simple. So in our chart we can replace game knowledge with lessons count. Uh, you need to actually learn a lesson from every game you've played. 4000 games means 4000 lessons. It should be more, honestly, but let's just simplify it. So don't play on autopilot without thinking. You need to actively think and seek new lessons. Ancient players stopped learning and went autopilot mode uh, when Immortal didn't. In time, Immortal player accumulated so much game knowledge compared to the other player that he became unstoppable and his MMR increased naturally. You're your own enemy and it's a very important mentality you should follow. Lots of people are getting very upset when they lose matches. And it's a common trap lots of humans fall into. It's a toxic mentality. I've fallen there myself. But while climbing, you should not care about the MMR number. And you should not be upset about the amount of games you lost today. You should not care about the quality of your teammates. And you need to do... All you need to do is to see your mistakes and learn from them. Try to be as perfect as you can be. Uh, you can learn a lesson or two from losing games or from games with, the, with bad teammates. It doesn't matter. Sometimes you even have more lessons uh, in bad games than in good games when you win. It's great! Uh, so finally, we can replace lessons count with MMR in our chart and now the picture completes. The concept is just hidden by a complexity of a ranking system, but under the hood, MMR is just amount of lessons you have accumulated. You should also have a healthy expectation about the game. You should know that you are getting matched with random people and that you your win depends on them. That means a lot of chaos and that the game is very hard, so hard that you might get lost, and that your climb will be long because of that. Let's talk a bit about the Dota 2 matchmaking. As an immortal player with 5k hours, I can say that in, gen in general it's very fair. People love to speculate about hidden pools and forced 50-50s. They seek excuses. But you need to stop it, uh, because when your teammates are at fault and not you, there is no lesson to be learned, right? It's important, so I'll repeat it. When your teammates or algorith algorithm is at fault, uh, there are no lessons to be learned. Multiple people, including me, including Grabby, have climbed, and we all had our loose streaks. Sometimes you are just unlucky, and even if you play well, you get stomped. 
It can even happen multiple times in a row. Sometimes you just started to play worse and didn't notice it. There's a lot, a lot in this game. On the other hand, sometimes you're lucky and you win easily even if you play average or even bad. Multiple people's multiple times in a row too. If you still wanna blame algorithm, think about it more. If you're on a loose streak and a fresh immortal player like me will play instead of you, will I'll have a much more higher chance of winning and breaking the loose streak, even with bad teammates. Because I know, I, I just know this game better than you and contribute more. So again, making less mistakes and knowing more about the game is key. There's a website that can help you measure your own game contribution called stress.com. It analyzes each of your games and provides you with the indiv individual match performance or imp. I trust this metric very much. In order to climb, you need to keep it as high as possible and statistically you'll climb. So this is my imp when I was climbing to Immortal and as you can see, it resulted in me reaching new heights because I was carrying my teammates hard. And this is a profile of a guy from one of my friend's game who was very upset at his own teammates. He was very angry. And as you can see, he actually played average. His imp is average. And the reality is he just can't climb. That's it. This is my imp uh, of my six games loose streak. As you can see, I still contributed a lot. So I was not upset at all. I knew that I played well, that I gave my best, learned new lessons. And that's all what I need, right? Some reason that I was not able to control, I was just losing. And later, when I was more lucky, this impact resulted in a big win streak. So using and respect this website, it's very handy. If you're on a loose streak uh, or can't climb, check out your imp from stress.com and you'll see that actually your imp is average and your teammates have it on average too. They're not that bad uh, as you think they are. You just can't contribute enough and get outplayed. Uh, you should know that if you want to climb, you should have your imp weak. And if it's not weak, find something you can improve upon and improve and improve. If I or another remote player will look at your replays where your teammates were bad and you played well, I'm sure I'll see so many I mean, not I, will see so many mistakes that uh, piled up and eventually led to your defeat. You just didn't notice them. You just don't see them. Uh, so again, focus on making less mistakes and knowing more about the game. Uh, even in my immortal matches, I see lots of mistakes that I'm doing and I know that if I'll improve upon them, my rank will rise. Okay, to summarize this section, don't focus on MMR, focus on gaining a lesson from every game you played and accumulating your game knowledge and prepare for a wild, beautiful and emotional ride to become immortal. Okay, so let's start with talking about the offlane role in general. Offlaner nowadays plays very similar to position 1, um, he's just more focused on early to mid game domination. You both lane with supports, you both need farm, your only difference from position 1 heroes is that you usually have stronger early game timings that you should capitalize on. And at that time, position 1 heroes usually farm up, but become stronger than you late game. Let's compare Doom and Anti-Mage. Doom at level 6 can kill anyone solo, and Anti-Mage can't. But Anti-Mage is a menace late game, and it becomes harder to play Doom late, because there will be lots of Lincolns, a lot of orbs, and your enemies will, get more, will have more HP. That doesn't mean that you're only strong early as Doom, no. You can still Doom yourself with Axe and run at them, uh, and you can break Lincolns, build useful items like BKB, Refresher, Shivas, you're strong late game too. Anti-Mage is just more favorite late game than you if your farm is equal. But you can always snowball and you should snowball. Uh, let's now compare Centaur with Morphling. You can and should stomp, stomp Morphling early because you have lots of burst as a Centaur, right? Uh, but later he'll have too much HP, he'll use BKB, Satanic, and your spells will not be that effective. That doesn't mean uh, you're useless later. As a Centaur, uh, you can still burst morph, uh, even in, even late, or any other hero with a smoke dagger stun. You'll just need uh, your teammates for that extra damage. And you're very useful in a team fight with Shivas and your ult that's basically a global disperser. And your are OES stomp, right? So you just need to snowball the game. So your job as an offlaner is to firstly stop or slow down their position 1 from farming the lane. It's important because jungle gives less gold. Um, Secondly, destroy their tier 1 tower. This will open up their side of the map for yourself to farm and rotate. More on that later. Thirdly, stop or slow down their position 1 from AFK farming jungle with smokes and deep weaving. Again, I'll talk about it later. And fourth, you need to farm yourself as much as you can. Uh, and with that farm, become a serious threat mid to late game. 
Four points, very simple. You can play lots of heroes in the offlane, but in the patch 7.35c, the best of laners uh, are tanky dudes that can't initiate. My personal best are Centaur, Warrunner, uh, Doom and Abaddon. Viper offlane or Winter Wyvern or even Wind Ranger are a very serious offlaners too. I just don't play them, my playstyle is different. Whatever hero you've picked, don't forget about those four points. Now that we know our job and we understand that our early game is very important, uh, let's look at how we can get an advantage in a lane. It all com uh, comprises of lots of small details you that you should perfect. Firstly, you need to know about creep equilibrium and you should keep it under your tower. Uh, you can do that by pulling creeps to the range creep, I do it on every pack of creeps, or you can pull forest creeps onto your pack of creeps. You need to have the creep to fight as much closer to your tower as possible, because this way enemies will have a longer road to back off if you decided to kill them, and it's gonna be harder for their position 2 or position 4 to gank you. Pull creeps as much as you can. Don't bother killing their ranged creeps in general, only when you're dominating, you can do that. Uh, it's too easy to get harassed for it. You should get all the lotuses. Always tell your teammate that the lotus isn't coming and push a lane a little bit before the lotus. Uh, this way it's gonna be easier to get it. Lotus is a burst healing that wins you early game skirmishes and you need to make sure you're getting it every time because uh, it's very important for you to win early game. Tell your position 4 to get wisdom a rune 30 seconds before it spawns. Or pick it up yourself if your support, support can't get it. Supports are the most strong heroes early game and uh, this wisdom rune will help them to be more dominant over your enemies and will prevent their supports to be more dominant over you and your allies, so it's very important. If you see that enemy position 5 has blocked your pool camp, always ask your position 4 to devolve it, uh, if they're not doing it. Blocking their pool camp and blocking yours completely changes the laning stage. If they don't do it, do it yourself, Sentry is only 50 gold. If you see that their position 5 tries to disrupt your position 4 pulls, you can help him uh, pull by harassing their position 4. Basically, you, you are not letting him to re the creeps. Simple trick, and I don't see enough players do that. Pulling is that important. Buy region if your HP or mana are almost depleted. Uh, you should also buy it beforehand, so to always stay top top. Region is very important, because if you are not full HP, you can't contest creeps and be a kill threat to enemy position 1, and if you're full, you can easily outfarm the spent gold and will not let their position 1 get some gold early. Right? This is very important and I want to say it again. Buy the region if your tangas or cells are almost depleted, because otherwise you can't lane and their position 1 will take advantage of that. Don't dive the tower for kills if you are not completely sure it's worth it. Uh, if they have no resources and can't farm, uh, you can farm everything. It's more than enough. Sometimes killing an enemy and surviving at 1 HP without a self will shift the balance. And now, all of a sudden, their position 1 can farm, can farm freely and you are still waiting for your region. And again, if you went uh, for the kill and now out of resources, ship them to yourself immediately to spend less time being weak. Don't chase kills and prioritize your own net worth and their position 1 destruction. You're a core and you'll need items to become online. If you don't have your timings, it's better for you to farm. And of course, their support skills isn't worth your death. Missing CS is griefing. Uh, hone the skill every game and don't miss creeps. Some people suggest to train in training polygon before every game session. I've tried it myself and it was alright, but I've learned that uh, the most from my games. Just focus on last hitting and don't think you're good at that. You can always become better. Tip it to help only when people are diving and you've accessed that it will be worth it. You have your own lane to win and gain farm on. Generally, uh, supports should TP, not you. You give their position 1 free farm and will need to spend mana and time to get back to your lane if you will TP. Remove items when healing, switch power threads. It's very easy to learn and it will make your early game stronger. Do it every time, do everything in your power to win this lane. Always understand who is stronger and when you become a real threat to the lane. This will help you not to die easily and kill them more easily. Look at your enemy items from time to time. For me personally, it's very important to know if they have burst healing or tear drops. You need to do it automatically in every game you play. This will help you to win skirmishes, right? So that there, there is like, like not an unexpected healing from them. You need to always win your lane. Also, you need to keep track of their level because if they have a, a like bigger level, it's easier for them to kill you. Don't get double waved. If they have two waves of creeps, that means that they have more XP because they killed their creeps already. And that if you will try to go on them, uh, they have like more creeps will be hitting you, right? 
If you are getting double waved, try to auto attack more or carefully get some of your creeps under the tower and farm there. And tell your support to not be aggressive. Actively communicate with your support. Tell them to contest their range script or to deny yours. Tell them to initiate the ward, buy a smoke if you want to find the position one. Place deep wards and ask them to play with you if you feel strong. You should not always uh, speak with your position four. You should speak with your team and com game communication is very important. You should abuse everything you have and this is a very strong thing to do. Early game itemization is important. I usually always go quelling blade because I want to mess with their position one last hits and assert dominance. Also, I want uh, I, I usually buy either a bracer uh, or a wraith band, uh, and I always buy a stick if they use a lot of spells. It helps a lot, especially with mana. It's already lots of game centered uh, slots, right? So I always prioritize early game items because I'm stronger early and these items help me dominate. Also, if I see they have uh, big nukes uh, like Vengeance Stun, uh, I've always buy a raindrop. raindrop. Sometimes you can buy a Hell of Iron Wheel and enjoy the region. Um, but if you're getting low, always buy a self or a set of tangos for yourself. Being full HP is that important. Uh, then play around your timings uh, or power spikes. Let's say you are playing Slaughter. You have power threats, Bracer, a stick, and level 6. You're strong, right? Uh, you're all too strong. What should you do now? Should you run mid and help kill their position 2 or TP bot and kill their position 3? No, that's kind of stupid. You should farm your first timing and it's Echo Saber. You should not force skirmishes and objectives around the map if you are not much stronger than their heroes. Uh, currently you're just slightly stronger and it's better to pressure your lane, right? To destroy their position 1. Uh, it's more optimal to completely boot out their position 1 from the lane, forcing them to farm cheap forced creeps because he can't lane with your ultimate, right? He can't get to creeps because otherwise he'll just bash him. And just farm your items, yeah, at your lane. If your teammates are being dove, you can TP, yes, uh, help to kill and get some gold this way. But you need to assess it, right? Because sometimes this is gonna be a mistake. Primarily, your job is to control top and farm your, up your items. After you'll get your dagger uh, and echo saber, that's your main timing, at which you can be a menace on the map. You can force Russian fight or some rotation because with Echo Saber and Dagger you can try to find and kill any hero quick, making lots of gold with those kills. Uh, it will still uh, be much easier for you to be dominant with those two items than with just simple power threats. The difference between you and other heroes will be that different. With the case of Slarder, soon enough there will be a team fight and you'll need Big Beep for it and Harpoon. That's why you always try to farm more. After hitting your main power spike, try to make some plays, but don't just run randomly missing out on farm, otherwise you'll get out farmed by enemy cores in 5 to 10 minutes, losing mid to late game for sure. You should occupy their part of the map, force rotations there, fight on your vision and make small plays, but you should farm in between those actions. Then ideally you take some good teamfights, scale scaling them off, then you kill Roshan and with the help of Aegis you seal them at their base, completely cutting off their, their cutting them off farm. And now you can farm the whole map while they just sit there and be scared. With your next Roshan you go high ground and the game is yours. You need to understand that gold and flame flow of the game and you'll start to see when you are supposed to do what. I wanted to talk a little bit more about occupying their forest after you booted their position 1 from the lane. Basically sometimes their position 1s are happy to just AFK farm and hope the game goes to minus 40 when they can care. Luna is an example of such heroes. She just farms ancient and don't give a fuck. You don't want to let that happen, so you need to ward their forest. You should either do it yourself or ask uh, your support and just sit somewhere near farming, uh, waiting for them to kill. If you kill them once or twice, they'll start playing more carefully, which slows down their, their farming by a lot. If they went uh, to the triangle, to the opposite side of the map, it's good. Now uh, your cores have three lanes to farm and they they only have two, right? Because their cores share farm. So you don't need to be a menace on the whole map, you just need to be a menace at your own part of the map. But yeah, sometimes it's a good uh, to, tell that, to tell your team and try to make a smoke play. For example, Luna is farming the triangle, Just let's just go there. We know she's here because we have vision in their forest. Make a smoke play, kill her, and booting, if, if you'll boot her even from her triangle, that's just a complete destruction of her game, and that's good. I always talk about how important is it to destroy their position 1. 
But after the laning stage, you should consider prioritizing killing other heroes too. If their mid dominates, uh, you should try to get a kill streak from reward from him. Or you can try to blow up their support, making a possible continuation of a fight 4 vs 5. There's a lot of things you can do. You should not always to be anti-position one. This is just your early game priority. Generally, you want to kill a person who can win the team fight, right? Uh, games of Dota can be very different. So the game uh, play I've described above can be executed always. So if you withdrawed at the lane or even lost your lane, what can you do? Your job is to recover. Still farm up your timings and try to make some good smoke plays, killing heroes with kill streaks or their position one ideally. Don't give up and try to do your best. But if you've, you got booted from the lane, you should always try to farm away from your other cores, giving them space, because you all share the same map. I won way too much games when I even lost my laning, and it's good, you should not give up. You need to press your buttons flawlessly. You need to execute all your combos perfectly. Press your shit. Uh, for example, there is like a centaur combo when you blink, stun, then you do shivas, or when you do shivas beforehand. Uh, some abandoned combos when you uh, harpoon a person and press manta. You can fuck it up, you know? And you should always press it perfectly. Just uh, do it in the demo mode. And uh, if you don't know about some mechanic, for example, a shield, there are like a three types of them, like a pure shield, magical shield and physical shield, go to the demo mode and check it out. Read wiki, uh, watch YouTube explanation, read some stuff on Reddit, learn, learn and learn. What if you are a Doom and the enemy uses Lotus? Will it be applied to the hero that you have casted it on? Mm, yeah, that's, uh, that's actually a point. And sometimes, even if a person is Lotus, it's profitable to Doom him, right? Because he's that important. It's okay if you will tank your own Doom. How tanky are you getting with two rings of protection as Centaur? instead of going early Bracer without any rings. Centaur is very squishy without armor because he has zero on it, right? So you should, can test it. Um, yeah, and also you can practice not only in demo mode, but in the full match with bots. And it's good to practice your words there. So yeah, do it too. Uh, then you need to create a pick loadout for yourself. Create a new loadout with four main heroes and some alternative heroes if your main ones are all banned. This is mine. You should spam heroes and not play just random heroes, because first of all, you'll know the limits of your hero bell better, you'll execute his combos better, and you'll be able to output more. Uh, you'll know when to, when to retreat, when to farm, when to do everything. Every, every hero plays very differently. Also, if you're playing a hero that you know well, you can focus on macro aspects of the game, like positioning, places to farm, vision, uh, um, yeah, and just focus on the game more. Because you'll have more free space in your brain. You already know the, the other stuff about the hero, right? This macro knowledge took me from divine to immortal alone, and I've already pressed my buttons right. But with the, the macro knowledge, I went to immortal. Also, you need to include bans for this loadout. Ban hero that you can counter. I mean, that can counter your hero. Don't just ban broken heroes. Uh, for example, the last patch, Meepo was very broken, right? And everybody was banning him. I didn't understand it. Because your mid laner, right, if I'm not playing mid, he can pick Meepo too. So why should I ban him, right? It's 50-50. So it's, it's a useless, you're not utilizing an aspect of the game. You should uh, ban a hero who can counter you. For example, if I like to play Slardar, I want to ban, ban Troll, right? Because Troll will, uh, he, makes me miss, right, and I'm becoming useless. Uh, or, for example, these are my, my heroes, and I usually ban Ursa and Slug just because they're squishy and I can't doom them or can't burst them as Centaur, right, or, or they're very dominant over the laning stage. Uh, then you need to copy-paste, don't ban my hero, I main him at the start of the each game. Because your teammates can ban your hero, right, and it's better for you to practice just your hero, so why not utilize it, do it. Uh, also, don't try to play position 1 and position 2, uh, and even position 4. Focus on the offlane and one other role, right? And always try to ask people to swap with you. Uh, because, yeah, I got lots of swaps, actually, and uh, lots of one games just because of that. Because I, I just can't contribute enough as position 1, for example, or position 2 even. Also, don't play both supports, position 4 and position 5. 
Just focus on one role, right? And I suggest position five, honestly, because it helps you to understand wording and smokes more and, and vision. Also, you need to make calls, fail and repeat. You need to control and understand the game, not being controlled. At least try to think about it, right? With time, you'll learn more about calling and it will give you more fruits. It alleviates a lot of randomness from the game. Uh, and your team, they sometimes don't know what to do, right? And you can tell them what, what they need to do. It, uh, it's a macro mechanic, so yeah, just practice it. Also, cheer to the teammates. I know, but not a lot of people love it, but uh, if you're losing, right, don't just give up, don't blame everybody. Like, it's okay, be a gentleman, you know, tell them that it's 50-50, still 50-50, like, guys, we will win this, don't worry, I know that you're upset, but remember, I'll be strong, our position one is farming, uh, you know, we have nice words and stuff, and uh, yeah, just be the guy everybody wants to win uh, games with, right? If people are upset, they play worse, don't let it happen. And then use Dota Plus Network Guide to understand if you are under farming. Especially, lots of people don't farm a lot at position 3, and I think it's a big mistake. Position 3 needs lots of farm, so use this feature. Net force are very different around uh, all the brackets, and you need to always have it better than the Dota Plus shows you. If you don't understand how do people farm this fast, look up some replaced Dota 2 Pro Tracker uh, watch some pros, how, how they play this hero, understand how they get so much gold, and just mimic them. Farm wins games, especially in low ranks. You should itemize like a king. Don't just follow guides, create your own guides. Uh, if their cores don't buy BKB, you should go for Halbert. If there's a lot of lockdown, go for BKB. If, uh, and don't, don't just buy Blink if you're not feeling strong. Because uh, it's just lots of gold for a simple initiation, right? It's better to build stats and don't die. Use Dota Plus Damage Graph to help you understand if you need to build physical or magical protection. Create guides for each one of your main heroes. I was describing every item here, uh, here, and it helped me to understand when I need what. Look at Dota 2 Pro Tracker and try to think why did this pro bought this item. It will help with your itemization greatly. Play position 5 to understand the macro play. Where are the good words? What is a good time to pop a smoke? It's very important not to grief your token games and to understand a thing or two about wording. I even carried some of my position 5 matches and got MVP for it. It was very enjoyable. I've learned warning, smokes and map control by playing position 5. And this was the missing part of my journey from Divine to Immortal. It was the macro play. I did everything else well, but I didn't understand a thing about the macro. I suggest to play 3 games in a row when you are farming tokens, so that you can uh, just focus on supporting. You can switch your mindset and truly focus on it, becoming a better support. When team fighting, you should always know your ideal target, the ideal way to start a fight and who to focus in a team fight. You should be prepared beforehand for all the possible scenarios, especially if they have Magnus, Axe, Witch Doctor, right? Because you need to play around Magnus to not let him ult you all or to just skewer you away or to Axe because Axe is very strong, just one great call and the team fight completely changes, right? Witch Doctor, same stuff. Don't try to finish early. It's better to just choke the enemy at their base and farm. Let your other cars, cores farm their items. And of course, don't go high ground without ages. If you expect uh, their buybacks, tell your team about it and don't dive. Tip to the lane with a lot of creeps if nobody is tipping. Tip is only 100 gold and you'll get so much more and you'll relieve the pressure. Pressure is important because when all the lanes are pushed in, you have more information on your enemies. Like the more seasoned you are, you, you will be able to see that just from the minimum. People don't uh, farm forest if there are land creeps nearby. They farm both. So you know that they will not... If, if this lane is pushed, nobody is farming around it, basically. Look at your minimap. A lot. With time, you'll be able to understand where the enemies are and play more carefully. Use a scan if you are finishing a tower or, uh, and, and you expect their TPS or, or stuff. If everybody is missing, tell your team that they have probably smoked. Or uh, if they are going rush, just use your minimap. It's very important. I look at my minimap 50% of my time. Can you imagine? It's such a small thing on my screen, but I look at it a lot. Notice when you lose a team fight after a team fight and make a call to far more. Learn to understand when you are losing and can't fight them. It's very hard to go high ground. So the best play for you if you are losing is to just split push, farm up and defend the high ground. It's optimal. If it's late game, always play near your team. Farm near your team. And try to join every major team fight. Don't fight S4 if they have five heroes. Powers five is just favored towards five heroes, right? Statistically, 
instead try to force fights when they are split. Uh, the prob probability to win these fights is just better. Because there is less spells thrown and uh, yeah, that's it. If you are losing, don't get squashed at the base. You need to push some lanes and make a smoke play. Uh, because they will be split, right? They are pushing all the waves into you, so the heroes are split and you can force a teamfight for versus, versus less. Uh, also, you need to kill heroes with killing threes because uh, of comeback mechanics of Dota. This can turn everything around. Smokes are very important, especially late game. If you smoke and find a 5 versus 2 teamfight for yourself, you'll easily win it because it's mathematically favored to you. After that, uh, they'll have such long uh, um, respawn timers, right? And uh, yeah, you can just push the wave or get the ages, and it's a huge advantage. And the smoke is only 50 gold. You should buy it yourself. If you don't understand the power of a smoke, uh, you need to learn more about it. This is such an important mechanic. I personally buy smokes as a core late game if my supports are not listening to me or if they don't know how to use it properly. Vision is very important. Stop fighting without vision. I personally have a rule for myself to not fight without vision at all, especially in the late game. There are exceptions, of course, but, but this is general. This is generally how I want to play my game. If you are playing as a support mid to late game, you should always carry a ward in your inventory. So that if a team fight starts, you should just put it everywhere, just put it on a cliff if it's near bar. If there is nothing nearby, just put it on the ground. It's that important. Because uh, late game, it's just like both cores are very strong and the advantage of vision, it helps them to win these games. You should take the rush every chance, chance you get. Ask your team to go rush. It gives gold, ages, XP. With ages, it's much easier to, to take some part of the map from the enemy because team with ages are mathematically favored to win team fights. It's kind of fighting five versus six, right? Because one person can respawn one uh, once. So tell your team to play at the side of the map where the Russian is. And after you've pushed all the lanes, ward it, just go kill him. Tormentor is the same. Lots of shards are powerful and you just need to capitalize on it. Always try to ask your team to finish the Tormentor uh, every time it's up. If you've died late, always think if you should buy back and help your team to win this team fight. Don't play very passively. By Beck's late game should not only be used defensively, but offensively too. Open AI, Dota bots, uh, always be back if there is a huge team fight. You should learn from them, or at least start considering it. Learn more. In the mid game, you can honestly not care about buybacks and just try to push for more items, because as a position 3, you need to snowball, right? But the more game goes late, you should consider more and more about your buyback. Dying late game without buyback is a big throw, so be very careful about it. Don't let your enemy split push you, especially if you're playing against split push enemies like anti mage. You should de push all the lanes. It's hard to play against split pushing, and it's a whole separate video, but you should just learn how to play against it. I will not describe it here, it's too deep. You should split push yourself if your enemy is very strong and death warning at some lane, right? When the game starts, try to assess if they're stronger level 1, deciding if you should fight for runes. If not, just tell, tell your team about it, or tell them if you're stronger, right? Um, just use it, capitalize on it. Every time you die as a core, it's 95% a mistake. You could have prevented it. So you need to watch your own replay later to understand how you could have prevented it. Also, you need to know all the mechanics and timings in Dota. Just know that every 2 minutes power rune spawns, every 3 minutes lotus and bounty, every 7 minutes it's wisdom runes, every 5 minutes day and night cycles, such and such. Roshan rewards, uh, Roshan's respawn timers, yeah, just do it. Also, it's very easy to do it, but for some reason I was not able to do it. So uh, every time you kill a Roshan, you just copy paste the time and like then you can paste it. Like if, if you you need to know when the next Roshan respawns, right? And you can compute it, recompute it, this interval. Uh, so learn how to do it. Also, if enemy has used buyback, you need to remember it or to even include it into your this copy pasted message, right? Uh, so that they don't have buybacks because it's it's easy, you can just win without them having buyback. And also, it's good, but I was not able to master it too, uh, is you just need to look at the team composition and to know who one is stronger, right? I don't know, for me, I just try to win every game. I, I, I can't like play, for example, we're stronger from minute 20 to 30, but they're stronger from minute 30 to, to 2 plus, you know? So, but uh, why not? You should learn about it. Maybe this will help you. <music>
then you need to look at your own replays to understand what you're doing wrong. Don't watch it at high speed. Uh, if you autopilot your replay by watching it, you'll not improve. Don't watch it when you eat. Uh, I didn't uh, want to do it, but because I thought like, why, why should I do that? I should just watch uh, pro replays. But actually, when I started doing it, I saw so many mistakes and then I fixed them. And there was a lot of macro mistakes, right? So it's very, very important. Also, you should uh, watch pro replays because they explain how to play this hero, right? Mm, do both. You should experiment with new heroes. If you see a hero that's gaining popularity or that you think is broken, that you kind of understand, right? But you just don't play him. Don't hesitate to try him for five matches. Uh, you might literally discover a hero that will be your new MMR cow. It's very important in the long run. If you think you should not experiment with other heroes because you're afraid of losing some MMR, you're so wrong, man. Just remember that I told you. You need to not care about your MMR, but about your game knowledge. You'll regain your MMR eventually, because when you do that, you'll expand your game knowledge. Uh, because also, you, the new hero might have a different playstyle, right? And different questions, uh, he may rise. And also, you'll have bigger chance to find a hero that will fit you, and you'll gain huge MMR with him. Uh, watch Dota videos to learn more about some parts of Dota. I recommend Game Leap Dota. He, this guy's speed explains heroes and makes tier lists. Sometimes his videos are wanky, but Generally, I watch every his video. Uh, then I, I recommend BSJ. He explains what the core wants, and he has a very nice playlist uh, that is called... I don't remember how it's called, but basically it's for beginners. It's good to watch it too. Uh, then there is Z Quixotix. This guy talks a lot about game and mindset. He's like the one and only support main in the Dota community, I think, who has a YouTube channel. Very good guy. And just watch random hero guides. Just type, for example, Abaddon guide and watch it because it, it will help to learn the hero, right? Also, you should doubt everything they are saying because even pros, they, their games are at, at very different uh, game speed. For example, Immortal games are very much faster than the Legend ones, for example. So doubt everything and believe yourself more. Uh, sometimes, for example, Winter Fire was, was very strong last patch, but, and I tried to play, play it, but just didn't click. I don't know, it, it was weak uh, for me, just didn't fit my playstyle. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just seek guidance, but don't follow it blindly. Also, create a log for yourself where you write all the things that you've learned. I did it when I was starting playing Dota, and it helped me to pinpoint the questions and my mistakes, right? Um, just treat your games a lot of Dota as like a lecture at the university, right? Try to, and when you write it down, it helps you to remember better. For, at least for me, it works this way. The next tip is to just have fun. If you don't have a natural urge to play, don't play. Let it naturally build. Just do other things because you're performing better if you're motivated. And of course, don't play if you're tilted. This is a huge no-no. It's better to watch your own pro replays and get a break. I know, just don't play. You perform bad when you're tilted. You just don't, don't notice a lot of, st of stuff that you would have noticed. Don't play seven matches a day. Your brain will be squashed like a mashed potato. Only play when you are at your 100% strength. Uh, this is a way to gain MMR. Personally, I play two games in the morning before work, after I'm very fresh, after I have eaten, and two games in the evening after work, after, uh, again, I have ate and, I, and got my shower. For me, it worked perfectly. So I'd suggest you to play three to four games a day, not more. And yes, don't play at 2 a.m. at the night because normal people, you you need to you want to compete with normal people, right? And normal people don't play at that time; they sleep. You should uh, play at at times when people are sane. Some people speculate that you should not play on weekend, weekends or holidays. I don't believe in that because I saw my stats at strats.com. There is like uh, an aggregate on uh, the day of the week, so it's fine. Uh, yeah, I had a I had a pretty good win rate at holidays and weekends, so yeah, this is kind of bullshit. I always believe in statistics. Uh, then I suggest you to log your MMR record, like the best MMR you have gotten, just to be proud of yourself. And uh, I used uh, Guild's feature for that. For example, this is my group. Uh, where I love it. 
But yeah, don't get too focused on your own money. It's just a nice thing to have and be proud of. And the last tip is don't think that you'll gain MMR quickly. Climbing in Dota is a marathon. When you have, if you have a 60% win rate, then you're a champion. Uh, it took me around 500 games to get from Archon 4 to Immortal. So that's a huge amount of time and it's it was four months, right? So, and I think that I was climbing very fast. Some people might do it in a year. So yeah, just prepare for it, be prepared. Okay guys, uh, this is it. Everything that, that I think is important, my mentality, my laning, I don't know, everything that I have, I have compiled in this list. Again, how should you use it? You just uh, notice what you are not doing or that, or what aspects of the game you know not a lot about, right? And just improve, improve, improve. Just improve every aspect, just improve every aspect of this. And um, try to go deeper, learn deeper, because I have just highlighted them, right? You need to learn about them more. Just use Reddit, use YouTube. And yeah, just accumulate your game knowledge and you will become immortal. Thank you so much for this, uh, for watching. And uh, yeah, it was a pleasure. My Dota uh, journey was such a good experience because I honestly love this game. I think it's the best game that was ever made. And I am very honored to be an immortal in this game. So I hope that if you want to do it too, if you want to become mortal, that you will do it. I believe in myself. Uh, if you want, you can write me up in the YouTube comments. I'll answer them and help you to become a better offliner. Okay, guys, good luck and see you in Dota. Bye-bye.